Steven, what's your favorite running YouTube poop joke? That's not a good one either. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> well, the obvious choice is Pingus, of course, but... If I, had I regret my question. <laughs> my hey, podcast is canceled. <laughs> Fuck. Well, this has been cro- this has been crossing the line. I crossed the line with my fucking answer. Steven, what if you woke up and got out of your bed and went to have breakfast at the table because you could smell it and you knew your dad was cooking breakfast, but when you sat down and the dish was presented in front of you, he, he pulled up the dish tray, pulled off the top, and it was spaghetti. And then he said, Steven, I'm Mama Luigi. He looked up at your dad and said, oh, no. And then what would you feel inside? Did he just say he was Mama Luigi, or did I look up and he was indeed Mama Luigi? <laughs> he just said it. It was still your dad. He still had a straight face. He was just looking down at you with that. Disclaimer! Crossing the line is not a show intended to bully or harass anyone. Do not go out of your way to find or mess with the authors featured on our podcast. They make what we do possible, and we love them. And you. Thanks. Joy. Okay. Steven, if you could sit on a bench in a beautiful woods, who would you like sitting next to you on the bench and why? I don't fucking know. Why would I be sitting on a bench outside? I don't know. I'm sure you've gone outside before. Imagine you're outside. Who would you like to be sitting next to? I... Hmm. Keep in mind, it's a beautiful wood. It's a beautiful wood. Hmm. Can it be anyone? No. Well then, what are the fucking... What's the fucking limit? I don't know, your imagination? Well, that's pretty much anyone, then! Um... Fuck, I'd sit next to R.L. Stein. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another stories. exciting episode of Crossing the Line, a fan fiction podcast where we read, review, and critique fan fictions for your listening pleasure. I nailed the intro for once, can you believe that? Yeah, man. I hate R.L. Stein. I'd make him tell me stories, it'd be cool. I'd make him not be there. <laughs> That's your limit. You kill him. You make him show up just so he can tell him to leave. <laughs> I'd say, Ah, oh, Arl Stein, you're right on time. Now go home. He's like sixty years old now. He like, <laughs> he, like walk, stumbles in. He's like walking through woods with a cane. You fucking <laughs> long ride home. Sorry about that. You invite him in. He tells us a story. Within halfway through, he has to take his heart pills, which you knock out of his hands, so he can't fucking live. And then you film him scrambling on the ground looking for his pills and shaking through the dirt. And at least it was a new Goosebumps special on Cartoon Network. <laughs> a, a, scary, a scary movie where an old man looks for his heart pills rapidly as time runs out. The curse of the missing heart. <laughs> the curse of the heart pills that spilled on the ground and I couldn't find them. <laughs> Goosebumps, the final book. The Goosebumps. final bump. <laughs> the final goose. A goose one. eats his heart pills. <laughs> he has to strangle it to get it back. <laughs> goose bumps. A goose ate my heart pills. A goose gave me bumps. <laughs> Please, someone restore my heart pill bottle. Unfortunately, we're not doing a goose bumps episode, despite what you may believe. Next time. I don't even. I wonder if there are. I mean, if there you, are, you guys. So I gotta just have to write something up real quick. We could write our own Goosebumps fan fiction. Fuck, I, w- I wouldn't mind writing a friggin' short story. That'd be cool. I would write it about Arl Stein. <laughs> and his sad, sad life. <laughs> it would be very scary, but only for him. <laughs> In my story. <laughs> Goosebumps. Goosebumps. This is scary. <laughs> he'd be reading it and you'd just be really sad, but he'd be really scared. <laughs> Arl Stein is genuinely scared by his own book. He'd be like, why is Arl Stein afraid of his own shadow? It's so sad. By his own shadow? How frail do you think Arl Stein's become? He turns around and sees his own shadow. And he gets really scared. Ah! Ah! Who is that? 
There's one called Monster Blood, and it just the caption is just the ooze is loose. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds pretty good. Sounds pretty cool. It's loose. Like a lot, a lot of these look like their their own like made up Goosebumps books. Some of them like there's the Cuckoo Clock of Doom two, Fuck and yeah. Return to Fever Swamp. Oh wow. Cuckoo. The Muscle Man. <laughs> Randy Savage. Is that a car? Is that a fucking regular show on The <laughs> Muscle Man? You Can't Scare Me Twice. Sequel to You Can't Scare Me. R.L. Stein loves Muscle Man. Eddie is fed up with Courtney King's <laughs> bravado. Well, like he is muscle fed man. up with her acting like she is so fearless. So on Halloween night, he makes up his mind to scare her once and for all. <laughs> and he's come up with a little... the. Uh, the uh, it clicked the thing on accident. And he's come up with a foolproof plan to do so, but little does he know that this night would be scarier than he could possibly imagine. <laughs> Any crossovers? That's uh, some. Um, hey guys, not welcome lot, to but... Goosebumps. You know who else likes Goosebumps? Harry wears My the mask. My mom. <laughs> I, I like that show a lot. Her. Phineas and Ferb put on the Han and mask and they can't take it off. <laughs> it conforms to his triangular aspects. Phineas' mom makes a model of his head. <laughs> the 3D model of Phineas' head. Phineas' mom grounds Phineas and Ferb for the entire summer. And the show's canceled. <laughs> it's Halloween, though. So Wait, yeah, is Phineas and Ferb eternally in summer? Yeah. And that's gonna be a hard one to pull off. <laughs> yeah. They just call it Summerween. Yeah, and like Gravity Falls. Uh, they make up their own holidays in that show, I think, at least once. Mm. Teen Titans! <laughs> ah, yes! Teen Titans! Can you guys Go. tell me a little bit what you like about Teen Titans? Uh, hmm. I had all the names figured out in my head for this one because I'm really bad with the names, but I'm starting. Oh, yeah. I like Terra. Tell us why you like Terra. No. Just trust me, I like Tara. This I, podcast is ruined! <laughs> I, prefer I gotta know the bleeding details about her blonde body. I, also, I like that she can pick up big rocks. It's very cool and funny. I also like Tara because she's like an interesting type of anti-hero that chooses to be evil in the end. Yeah. Well, not in the, well, not in the end, not completely. Like It is what it is. She goes in and out of it. I like, I like she, that she's not, like, completely polar towards one side. I like when she tries to pull Robin's mask off and he says, that doesn't come off. And she says, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and she decides to be evil. It makes her really mad. I like the leaked episode they put on Newgrounds where, like, Jinx gets banged by a Cyborg and he keeps going booyah with each thrust. It's really funny. Is that real? Yeah, man, look it up. <laughs> It's real. I didn't know that the creator of Teen Titans was called Zone Tan, though. That's the guy that did Squiggly, right? Yeah, man. He also did Phineas and Ferb. He also did, uh... Ed and Eddie. <laughs> All of it, by himself. He's it was man. originally gonna be a Newgrounds exclusive, but Cartoon Network bought him out. <laughs> Said, you can't keep all this to yourself, man. This is good stuff. <laughs> Come on, don't be greedy. Poor Zone Sama, veteran of the animation industry. Never recognized. Always very busy. Alright, guys, tell me your favorite thing about Zone Sama. Uh, I like that despite being kind of pegged as just um, Zone Tan, he's still like making new mascots and everything. I like his uh, ZTV, what he's been doing with that. As rare as the updates are, but it is what it is. I like that he can do three push-ups uh, with his knees down. But not, <laughs> but not with them up. I can do that too. Yeah, Steven, you're one of those guys. Do you and Zone ever have conversations about stuff and such? Uh, he liked one of my posts recently, and that whole time I was watching it like a hawk, hoping it would convince him to follow me on Twitter, but alas. We'll get him yet. One day. I'd say we could get Zone on the podcast, but I don't think he talks. He yeah. streams a lot, but I don't think he uses a mic. 
he doesn't like he doesn't um when he talks it's not him it's like his advisor she's a girl she's mm -hmm. i forget her huh. name but she's cool well he doesn't talk but he keeps messaging steven and asking him how to do a push-up without using his knees and steven keeps saying it's easy just you just keep your feet up and your knees and he's like no it's not i've tried that it doesn't work that way you I say listen mr zone charles <laughs> let me talk let me walk you through you start out simple you know you know those little wall push-ups you see the girls do you got to start with that okay just like going up against the wall, it's a lot easier, trust me. Then you can eventually migrate down to the gravity where all the ground is, do your knees, eventually you'll get to one knee, and then eventually you can get both knees up on the ground, and then you can hop yourself up and down on the ground, pop and lock, and booyakasha, <laughs> all of a sudden you're a jacked old man. And then Son Sama blocks Steven because he gets frustrated, and then like a month later he'll unblock him again and then ask him the same question. Oh, and Steven's yeah. like, I just, I told you last time, you gotta... And he gets mad again and blocks Steven, so... Zone Sama, can you send your ambassador to come onto your, to the podcast and talk to us to defend yourself? Yeah, we want to tell her that it's really easy. You just got to get your knees up, and then you can use your arm muscles, and it's not that hard. It's an achievement you unlock by following me on Twitter. It would be a really good political move, trust me. It's true. Anyways, Teen Titans. Yes. Teen Titans. Well, all, <coughs> of our, all of our fan fiction is going to be about Teen Titans Go, right? Yours. Yeah. I mean, oh, I'm really. sure. I'm sure. Okay, I gotta go to my favorites. My it's app. Weird. Oh, I, I just like opened mine and it, the very top top thing says chapter two. That's not a good sign. <laughs> Where's chapter one? I gotta delete all my Naruto ones from last week. <laughs> well, well, one of you guys can get us started. I gotta figure this out real quick. I can go first, I guess. Whoa, Mr. Steven, last name. Uh, you got yourself mm, some scandalous detail. Oh man, I like this. I like how uh, this guy starts out pretty confident. Hello guys, this is my remake. It's, re it's a really good, but very short. Read it, then I will talk to you at the end. Beast Boy. Last time on Total Drama Island. The cast, had to, <laughs> the cast had to go on a dangerous canoe trip to this Creepy Boys, Chris. Bony Island. People got caught in quicksand. People they were can't ch leave the island. That's the show. <laughs> <laughs> Beast Boy's dumb. That's his thing. <laughs> people were chased by prehistoric geese and beavers, and people bent the rules to make a fire in is pushed off screen by Mayu. Mayu, fast and annoyed. But too bad for the gophers because Ki Ka Kaiba? Because Kaiba <laughs> told Bass how to win. Yada yada yada. Can we get on with this already? Beast Boy. Dude! Gets in her face. You're ruining my thing! Mayu grabs his face and pushes him back off screen. Don't care. Faces the camera. Kaiba was voted off. End of story. <laughs> no. <laughs> find Kaiba. Out, find out who gets voted off on total. Beast boy. Wait. No, total <laughs> beast boy island. Everyone's beast boy. <laughs> he does the same thing twice. Total. Hey, that's my line. Cuts to theme. Episode starts with Beast Boy in a helicopter. Beast Boy. <laughs> Episode starts off good. It's like it's like the opening to Dead Rising. <laughs> like, Get me down to that top of that mall. Beast Boy. Like cyborgs driving the plane. Beast, Beast Boy, you don't want to go down there, man. <laughs> Booyah. Beast Boy flies. Booyah up. as he lowers his helicopter. <laughs> Booyah. Booyah. Is it just a slow descent and so Beast Boy jumps out of the helicopter? <laughs> Beast Boy awkwardly jumps like the two feet that he mm -hmm. loaded the two. Like tucks oh him off. Then he meets Carlito. <laughs> Beast Boy flies over the cabins in the helicopter and passes by holding a megaphone. Morning dudes! <laughs> You know, wakes Wait, up. Is, is Beast Boy supposed to be the Chris McLean of this island? Yeah. I guess so, yeah. I don't like that. <laughs> Chris McLean's already the perfect host. Yeah. You know, wakes up and hits head on top of him. Ugh, that guy's really starting to annoy me. Wait, wait, wait. Eno? Yeah. From Naruto? Yeah. Why Eno? Oh, I guess this is the like characters. the Cartoon Network All Stars Dude. all on Total Drama Island. Oh, and obviously, like... Eno's the most popular Naruto character. Oh, there's more. Just listen to this next one. 
Sissy yawns. He just loves ruining Yay! our mornings. Totally up, go. Go, warm up the go warm up the shower for me. Ten ten blank stare at Sissy aggravated. Ten ten and Eno, now, are you kidding me? You remember. Ten ten's going to pin her to the wall with all of her kunai. <laughs> I'd like to forget about Ten ten and Eno forever. Why? They're good. I guess. Sis. Do they even do anything after, like, when they're children? Um, Tenten has one, like, filler arc in Naruto, I think. <laughs> Ino may also, but Ino is not very important, usually. Hmm. Sakura trained under their president, so Ino couldn't compete. <laughs> Go on, Steven. Sissy, aggravate. Now! And remember, Tenten entirely not too hot this time, I know. Scene change to all the girls except Sissy, who's inside waiting outside the communal restroom holding it. Oh, man. My... <laughs> so all Sissy. the girls are doing the pee-pee dance. Yosh. My what do you mean, Yosh? <laughs> <laughs> you know Knock I'm... that off. Hey. <laughs> Mayu, severely irritated. Oh, sh... him like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My... Not you. <laughs> My severely irritated. Oh, if she isn't out in the next two minutes, I swear. Sakura, what's strains taking it so long? Ten ten. Sissy needs her private time. My, don't you go defending her. I know she's making you mad too. Ten ten looks away nervous and cuts to what confessional. Good start to our story. Sissy's like the Heather in this scenario, and Ten Ten and Eno are like her two little crony friends, the dumb one and the nerd. You're right. <laughs> ten ten looks away nervous and cuts to confessional. She's not wrong. <laughs> you, you, me. Uh, that's it. I'm going lumberjack style. <laughs> walks off. Ah, <laughs> uh, my. Yumi's, Yumi's gonna drop a number two outside. This better <laughs> not be a rehashed plot of an oddly specific episode of Total Drama Island. Oh, you know Again. it's gonna be that. <laughs> Again. I wonder if it's by the same guy. Uh, oh my god. My shivers. Gross. Beast Boy on intercom. <laughs> hey! Get out of the bathroom! <laughs> Attention campers, get ready for the most challenging challenge yet! Breakfast in three minutes at the fire pit! Tenten knocks on door as everyone starts leaving. Um, sissy, sissy from inside. Can you come in here and lotion my back? It's peeling. Mayu covers Tenten's mouth. Who's uh, Mayu? I have no idea. Spell it. M A Y U. Mayu, I'm gonna look that up. Keep reading. Mayu, Mayu covers Ten Ten's mouth. Uh, yeah, no. How about you get out of here? I'm coming in there and bringing you out. Sissy, thinking it was Ten Ten. What was that? Walks out. How <coughs> dare you? Realizes it was Mayu. Mayu, icy stare. How dare I what? Sissy, nervously. Ugh. Mm -hmm. Mayu, oh no, please, you had the guts to say it no, to the cool. greatest weapons master in her village, who's also a very high rank. Surely you can say it to little old me, smirks and continues glaring. Tenten flattered, greatest weapons master, high rank. Could be an OC. Probably, maybe, so, I don't maybe. know. Maybe. Well, so I'll, all I've been able to discover is Mayu is some kind of vocaloid. Mm. <laughs> or possibly an OC, whichever oh, seems more realistic. <laughs> Death embraces maybe. Sissy gold. <laughs> That's Look so at this like Billy and Mandy to hell. Oh jeez. That's hmm. Grim Grim and Mandy. Lovers beyond life and death. Oh, Except boy. that's not Mandy at all. <laughs> it's like, seriously, that's like... Poor Grim. It's over-stylized to the point where she's unrecognizable. It's also like... I, <laughs> I hate the shoujo art style. Hmm. I like... I have an app that recommends me manga to read every day, and I read like a new one every day or so, and right. I, whenever I open a shoujo, it always looks like the same shitty art style, and it's like... Really thin and not clean and and like really over stylized and detailed and right right. <laughs> boogie boogie. Deviant art people <clears throat> on their scythes. 
Yes, someone on DeviantArt made a comic called Grim Tales from Down Below, and that art's okay, I guess. Oh, I think they've read that. That's oh, that but it has like easy, Spawn so. and Oogie Boogie, I guess, is in it. There was some Billy and Mandy like comic on the internet that was pretty good, like a post-show comic, but it probably isn't that one. That one looks hmm. kind of weird. Probably not. Sissy gulps then glares back. How dare you talk for Ten Ten? She can answer for herself. My small chuckle. Don't even try lying to me. Mm, chaos emeralds. <laughs> <laughs> sissy, eyes widen. My, you may not know this, poke sissy's forehead, but I can read thoughts. Sissy. No, I'm intrigued. I didn't know that. <laughs> so, but I guess you know that, don't you? Don't you, my, my favorite character. <laughs> who's possibly a vocaloid. <laughs> Sing something for me. I want to see if it makes a vocaloid noise. Steven, make a vocaloid noise. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they uh, sing, right? I hate vocaloids. They're pure auto tune. Uh, let's see here. Sissy, yeah, right. Maya, try me. I know you're thinking I'm a lunatic, that I'm insane, that I'm pushing my luck by telling you off, gets in her face, but I also know that you're scared of me. Ten ten. Uh, guys, we should probably beast boy on intercom. Get your ass to the fire pit! <laughs> <laughs> I've had enough exposition. It's a TV show. I don't even like the vocal <laughs> God, Beast Boy hitting them hard. <laughs> Beast Boy cracking down on filler exposition. Good. Scene change to the fire pit. Beast Boy over enthusiastically. Are you ready for today's awesome challenge? Nardo, we are ready! <laughs> I didn't uh, know Naruto was here, too. I yeah. wish I didn't know Naruto was here. <laughs> Sakura rolls eyes. Mayu, considering the last couple of challenges have been nothing but life-threatening, sure, why not? Beast Boy, first things I first. Think I've, de I've determined Mayu is an OC. I'm sure, Because the only yeah. thing that OCs do in these it's stories is, like... Fucking talk They shit. just, like, yeah. talk just better than everybody. Right. They just talk for the author, like a thing that the mm -hmm. author would feel they should say when they're writing the story. <laughs> exactly, yeah. But she sounds like a vocaloid, so no one can understand <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, uh, he's doing the noise again. It opens sure. her mouth and it's, it's like, like, static. <laughs> George, you're gonna look deeper into that vocal and it's gonna be an OC of some kind. <laughs> A famous OC. <laughs> it's here, my uh, beast boy. First things first, grabs, grabs a can of beans. Heads up, <laughs> throws it at Hinata. <laughs> the blind one? Oh, wait, Hinata's yeah, not, not blind. She just has dead eyes. <laughs> <laughs> the blind one. <laughs> I always forget. I always she can see the chakra in those beans, it's fine. <laughs> I, I, get, I do the same thing, I keep confusing her with Toph. I used to think that she was blind because whenever it would show her point of view, it did just show like the chakra lines and stuff. So right, like, And she right. had white eyes, so I just assumed she was like blind and could see through people. Mm. But um, that's not, in fact not the case. Yeah. Because she used to like peek out at Naruto from the corner and I was just like, why is she like hiding? Can't she see through walls with the chakra lines? Yeah. Yeah, but she wants to see him, not just his chakra. Mm. See his small Narudong. Yes, that's what makes him a man. Hinata, ah! Braces for impact, only for Naruto <laughs> to catch it. Braces for impact, just gives up. Hit me. I'm braced. <laughs> I'm beamed. <laughs> Naruto, whoa, that was close. Beast Boy, these cans of beans are breakfast. Beast Boy, almost got her. That bitch is dead next time. Sissy. Um, no. Breakfast is for crepes, croissants, and Jim's disgusting eggs. <laughs> this... Uh, I'd rather not talk about it. <laughs> this holds up can is not breakfast. Choji. Beans, beans are good for your heart. The more Choji. you eat, the more you gets hit with a can and he falls over. Beast Boy, today's challenge is about survival. We're going, holds up a M16. Why is Beast Boy the hunting. mediator? 
<laughs> Where does he fit in? He's the cool guy. Beast Boy, today's challenge is about survival. We're going, holds up an M16, hunting. I. <laughs> the vegetarian one? Yeah. A vegetarian M16. <laughs> Not animals, though. Odd. Is that a gun? Naruto, uh, what's a gun? <laughs> Your sweet Wanna Naruto. find out, Naruto? <laughs> Beast Boy with blue anime lines on head. Seriously, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> Sasuke, a gun is a weapon that shoots out bullets. It can kill people. Beast Boy, correct. Would someone like to demonstrate? How about you? You've been looking kill crazy lately. Mayu s smirks evilly. I have, haven't I? Glares at Sissy, and I have a really good target. You Sissy can't Gold. shoot cartoon characters! <laughs> Beast Boy can. It's <laughs> unethical! <laughs> On Total Drama Island, someone <laughs> dies. <laughs> Anything's legal in Total Drum Island. It's a Total Drum Island battle royale with all your favorite cartoon characters. <laughs> Beast Boy makes them jump out of the plane and they all have to pick where they land before the storm comes in. Total Open Water Island. <laughs> total Open Target Island. Sissy gulps. Mayu gets up and grabs the gun. <laughs> Beast Boy, just aim and pull that trigger. Mayu, perfect, aims at Sissy. Two second warning, run fast. Sissy, wait, really fast and scared. You're not actually going to let her shoot me, get shot in the head. <laughs> oh, oh shit. Gophers, gas, base, gas. Beast Boy, got her. Base? Bass, Bass. I keep thinking it's friggin' Mega Man character base. It could be. It could be. I'm fine with that. I don't know that. who it is yet. They haven't really talked to him. I hope True. it's another OC. <laughs> you, me. It probably is. <laughs> As if their personalities would reveal anything about who they are. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> look. I don't know, Naruto didn't know what a gun was. True, true. <laughs> and Sasuke I bet, did. <laughs> I bet Naruto knows what a gun is now. <laughs> <laughs> Gophers, gaps, base, gas, Yumi. Finally! Everyone stares at her. Finally? What? what? Was that wrong? Mayu, not in my book. You're speaking for me, too. Beast Boy, good aim, Mayu. Although I would have shot, takes gun and shoots Herb in the arm and leg. <laughs> 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 Oh, no! <laughs> My Damn! Herb, Herb gets introduced just to get shot. <laughs> Wait, Herb? I missed that far. Where's Herb? Uh, who's Herb? What did Beast Boy say? I Beast... think he shot Mayu. No, he just said, good aim, Mayu. Although I would have shot, takes gun and shoots Herb in the oh. arm and leg. <laughs> Okay. Twice. I missed Herb. <laughs> Shoots Herb twice. <laughs> Herb's there just to be a meat shield. <laughs> Base. Gasp. Herb. What the fuck? Mayu. <laughs> <laughs> Say it like a nerd. <laughs> Which one I'm is he? He's the ugly one. <laughs> oh, the guy with the weird... The okay. acne. The, I had to uh, look, the hate boner. Last time we talked about Herb, I had to look him up and I got mad. So I haven't forgotten yet. <laughs> okay, okay, I got Herb. What the fuck? My, no way. She's dead. Drops to knees. Yes. Yumi, crap. How are they dead? Mayu, you're awesome. These things killed people. Thanks. Beast Boy. Yeah, epic. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Beast Boy. They do, but these are more deadly guns with special bullets. Special bullets <laughs> that kill people more. <laughs> Herb. It's wipes the blood slash white liquid that's on his leg and arm. Everyone, sperm! <laughs> My, and let me guess, this game is called War. Beast Boy, no, it's what deflated anime face. Fuck what she said. Hinata, so, so will we be killing it's, anything? He shot him with sperm. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Herb. <laughs> He has a hole of sperm in his arm. God. He said, what the fuck? And then he's like, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> You'd rather be dead than shot with sperm. 
<laughs> it would it makes him worry about his masculinity. Herb is a fragile man. It makes him worry about his orientation. Do you think Herb replenishes his own tank? <laughs> Recycles, alright. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, he knows. He knows. I don't. <laughs> I don't know. You Steven will. Steven, explain it to him. Chris Chan likes to. T <laughs> Chris Chan was doing a mumble chat, and the fucking subject of eating your own cum came up, and he said, Yes, I often recycle mine. And he, he admits Recycles. to eating his own cums. Oh, yeah. it's so gross! I, 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 I don't call it eating. I just I, I I think it's more recycling. You know, what comes out of your body goes back in. It's I, just fine. I've decided that Christian deserves everything that's ever happened to him. I changed my mind. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> he personally doomed himself with that act. And now Earth too. <laughs> that one thing. And now Earth in turn. <laughs> And not a, so we'll be killing anything, Sakura or anyone, Beast Boy. Of course not. Why you thought I would give a bunch of hyperactive teams that hate each other the means to just kill each other? This yeah. hunt is a sex and war hunt. I'll explain everything once we get to the forest. So finish <laughs> breakfast. Sissy's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Camera goes to everyone, especially the girls Naruto saying what the fuck. Naruto needed to know what a gun was. <laughs> <laughs> Naruto, really? If Pervy Sage were here, we would re be ready by the time Beast Boy said sex. Scene changes the contestants and Beast Boy in the forest in front of a gun rack. The contestants and also Beast Boy, who is still here. <laughs> He's the head. Beast Boy. He our... filled those guns. <laughs> Beast Boy. Alright guys, time to divide the teams. The base seducers are Herb Herb <laughs> one one leg. <laughs> Herb, Naruto, Kai Band tosses them their guns. And as for the gophers, Eno, Ailita, Tenten, and Mayu tosses them their guns. You'll also be getting these awesome hunting glasses and camo capstone protect you from getting raped. <laughs> that means <laughs> <laughs> Hello? <laughs> These awesome rape protection gears. <laughs> Just goggles and a hat. Beast Boy, what ship are you running? <laughs> this would never fly on Chris's island. <laughs> this is Beast Boy's island. The rape and murder a-okay. <laughs> There's just challenges. <laughs> Open water island. <laughs> it's just the it's just the plot of fucking Crimson Climax. Mm. Tosses them their guns. The me that means the rest of you, Lee, Millie, Sasuke, Sakura, Ulrich, Yumi, Odd, and Sissy, you guys are the NA. Get stuff out of the trunk. Here, you're nothing. You guys do nothing. <laughs> Good shot. Mayu smirks. This will be awesome. Sissy annoyed. There's no way I'm doing that. Hey, Sissy's alive. <laughs> she Sissy, has, didn't you get shot in the last chapter? <laughs> she, she has a thick forehead. She's fine. <laughs> <laughs> See, that forehead's strong. <laughs> like Avdol taking a bullet to the brain. <laughs> Sis. Sasuke, hmm, not in this lifetime. Mayu chuckles and licks Sasuke from behind. Come on, you look cute, Sasuke. Sasuke glares at her. Beast Boy, Sasuke takes leave and you're of the game. Okay. Sasuke <laughs> angrily groans and cuts to confessional. Stupid kid. Mayu, confessional. Beast Boy is kind of ironic because his hair looks like a duck's butt. Beast Boy said on the intercom, begin the game. Sorry guys, that's all I have. A Begin lot. the rape. <laughs> Sorry guys, that's all. I have a lot of a lot of sneak peek coming soon. Tell me in the comments if this is better than the original total drama of Naruto <laughs> Lyoko. Yes, it is. Thank so you. Sorry, ha sorry had at, had add Lyoko or it would make no sense. Had to add Lyoko or it would make no sense, huh? Yeah, yeah that's I agree. Sissy there. Without Odd there. Yeah. Ulrich's a hunter. <laughs> He's got a sperm gun. They always do that where they spend the whole thing building up some big event and <laughs> nothing happens. They're like, oh, geez, I, geez, I gotta go work. That's all gotta I had. to school. That's all I had. I wanna look. I'm gonna check out this author real quick. What does he made? A b 
one. Just a clip of a really awesome story I'm working on. Tell me if it's good or not. It's Naruto related. Naruto Shippuden and the Teen Titans. Stop reading the title. The best. <laughs> to to <laughs> the <laughs> at Freddy's. Read to yourself. I'm gonna give this one a review. I'm all right. I'm gonna give this one a rating of um. Herb's recycled material. <laughs> oh. <laughs> because, uh, that's some. Um, as he mentioned earlier, he basically re went and recycled his old photo, his old story to make a new one, but with Code Lyoko, I guess. And, uh, there was a lot of cum in it. <laughs> I. Hmm. I rate it like Beast Boy yelling into a microphone on a helicopter out of 10. Because it's really choppy and loud and it's <laughs> nonsense. And not even. I Like, you know how a helicopter is like. Yeah. That's how his story was written. It was like. Just like throwing characters, throwing words, throwing plot points. And it was really short. And it was like 10 seconds of Beast Boy yelling over a helicopter. I give this the rating of the Battle of Earth Wounded Me because that really got me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I changed my rating. <laughs> I, ch <laughs> <laughs> I rate this. If Beast Boy had a pencil and a piece of toilet paper on a deserted island and decided to write a short story that could only fit on the length of his piece of toilet paper he found on the deserted island, some of it would be thought to resemble this. <laughs> That's my rating. Oh, <laughs> 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 wow, what a beautiful story. Uh, do you want to go ahead or do you want me to take the next round up? Um, since we're in this order on this couch, I will go next. Okay. <laughs> um, Excellente. 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 Okay, don't read the title. Boy. Oh no, this just goes right into it. <laughs> oh, sweet. Alright, then just go right into it. Lay it on us. Beavis and Butthead wake up one day to find that their uh... TV has been stolen and they embark on a quest to find it. Is this the plot of the Game Boy game? No, it's the plot of the movie. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> that too. After hours of searching, they're about to give up when they find an abandoned house in which was a Trigun. In which was Trigon, you know, the most powerful evil villain in the DC comic universe. Is oh that my true? God. Possibly. Uh, Trigon. Yeah. His... I was thinking of the anime Trigon. <laughs> no. Ash. Raven's dad. Yeah. yeah. And here's the transcript of how that what happened. Trigon on the phone with someone. Yeah, sure. Could these guys pull us off, Satan? It's got to look like an accident. This is like the plot of the movie, you're right. <laughs> Beavis and Butthead walk up to the front door. Trigun, here's the duo outside. It better not be the yeah. movie. <laughs> you wish. I'm reading that title and I think it's just the movie. Beavis and Butthead so do tea... I, sh I can't read the title. Go ahead. But uh, you, you get the gist. Oh my god. Trigun, here's the duo outside. Yeah, hold on a minute. That must be them now. Yeah, I'll call you back. Hangs up phone. Come in. Beavis and Butthead enter, and Beavis walks over the TV. Uh, TV. Uh, Trigon flips on light. You're late, Butthead. Really? Uh, did we miss Baywatch? <laughs> Trigon gets a good look at him. Is that your best Beavis impression? Listen, I'm, I was thrown off. I don't know how I was thrown uh, off. Did we miss Baywatch? Oh, <laughs> I'll try again after this. Trigon flips on light. You're late, Butthead. Really? Hold on, I gotta remember who's Beavis and who's Butthead. Beavis is Cornholio, Butthead's the other one. Yeah. Right. Cornholio. Come to Butthead. Come to really? Butthead. Uh, did we miss Baywatch? <laughs> Trigon gets a good look at the duo. Man, Satan said you guys were strange looking, but geez. Oh well, as long as you get the job done. What are your names? Uh, Butthead. Uh, Beavis turns his attention to Trigon. Oh, hey, Beavis. Hey. <laughs> Trigun. Well, that's alright. I'd rather not know your real names anyways. My name's Trigun. <laughs> now look, I'm gonna get my... I it love... is the movie! <laughs> <laughs> I love the movie and I know all these lines, so this is even better. <laughs> Let's go. Come on, we got a movie to get through. 
You just plug in your VHS copy of the movie and then just say Triton over all the other Hold names. on, I'll scroll. Let's do that. First ever movie review. <laughs> Crossing the line. No, I scrolled a little bit down and trust me, it gets better. Okay, I'm oh. trusting you. The fans at home are trusting you. Well, Zone Sama so. is trusting you. <laughs> this is his first one he's tuning into. Yeah, man. Now look, I'm gonna get right down to the point. I'll pay you ten grand plus expenses, all payable after you do her. Uh, do her? <sighs> yeah, that's right, do her. I'm offering you ten thousand dollars plus expenses to do my daughter. We got a deal. Uh, actually, we just want to watch TV. Shut up, Beavis. Uh, yeah, we'll do your daughter. No, I want to watch TV! <laughs> your impressions are funny. They're not yeah. good, like, so inconsistent. <laughs> Slaps Beavis, then turns both himself and Beavis around. Damn, Damn it, Beavis, you butt much. This guy wants us to score with his daughter. Uh, he's gonna pay us. Uh, we could buy a new TV. Uh, yeah, really? Yeah, cool. <laughs> both turn back around. Uh, uh, we'll do it, sir. Uh, well, all right then. Let's get down to business. Here she is, boys. Hands them a photo of Raven. Her name's Raven. She ain't as sweet as she looks. She stole everything They're from me. They're talking to Triton? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Her giant demon dad? Yes. Holy fuck! They busted into a motel and Triton was hunched over a phone. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. They're that talking made, to Satan. I made this a lot better. Hell yeah. And you gotta watch out, cause she'll do you twice as fast as you do her. Whoa! <laughs> cool! <laughs> Both make their trademark noises and excitement as they stare at the photo. Can you audibly explain the part where they're dancing in the club and they, they get the really well animated? Like, yeah, there's like a rotoscoped 3D dance scene where it spins around Beavis and Butthead like right. doing a really action-oriented dance. And the, like the literal visual quality is better than any part in the movie. Like the animation is, it must be rotoscoped or something similar because... When it spins around them in the 360, they're, like, doing, like, really quick, like, super right. exact dance moves. And mm -hmm. it's, like, it's so bizarre mm -hmm. to see those models mm -hmm. do, like, a really well choreographed and well animated dance. My Ste Steven, have you seen the movie? I have. Okay, so you, you know how they just do their stupid, like, this dance, but right. then it's, like, a literal, <laughs> like, 360 oh camera god. chasing around it? Like, it's been a while, but oh my god. <laughs> Friggin'. My, here's my question. If they rotoscoped it, who the hell was the model that they rotoscoped for him? Mike Judge. <laughs> <laughs> See, guys, he, they move like this. You gotta get the elbows in the right place, alright? So you gotta... See, they picked me because I have a big head. <laughs> and I can do this. <laughs> Mike Judge is home, funny. I'm waving, waving my arms back and forth. It's pretty cool. He's doing the Mario. She's holed up in a tower shaped like a T. I can transport you there. Hold up. Uh. <laughs> hold up. Uh, hold. Can we watch some TV first? Trigun destroys TV with his powers. No. Opens up a portal into Raven's room and Beavis and Butthead walk through. <laughs> Beavis. Where are we? Butthead. Uh, I wouldn't know. Trigun steps through. Oh, and one last thing. Very important. Raven's got a small other satchel. Black bag about this big. I need you to bring it back, boys. Very sentimental value. Know what I mean? Any questions so far? Butthead. Uh, does she have big hooters? Uh, Trigun. She sure does. <laughs> she sure does. <laughs> I should use that voice from now on. It's better. <laughs> Butthead. This is gonna be cool. <laughs> Trigun. And don't let me down. <laughs> Portal closes. Butthead. We're gonna get paid to score. <laughs> Beavis. God. Oh, God. <laughs> you just like combine them both and use them for both of them. <laughs> <laughs> they did this at the same time. <laughs> they infused. It's like the Beavis. <laughs> yeah! Then we're gonna get the big screen TV with two remotes. <laughs> Beavis, this is the greatest day of our lives. <laughs> yeah! Beavis and Butthead begin rummaging through Raven's stuff and find Raven's spellbook and proceed to open it up and read it. <laughs> Butthead. Uh, uh, words, uh, words, uh. Butthead stops at Raven's most used spell. Azareth Metrion Zinthos. But they mis misinterpret it as it, 
ass erect matriarch sign throat <laughs> and laughed about it. <laughs> then Butthead <laughs> finds some skulls and said, Whoa, this is cool. This is cool. Beavis rushes over and they both remark about how cool it is again. Right about then, Raven steps in and pulls them over with her magic and begins interrogating them. Raven. All right. Uh, how do I do a girl's voice? Hold on. <laughs> She's right. at, and she actually has kind of like a... All right. All right. Who are you two and voice. what are you doing in my room? There we go. Just sort hey, of a bored... Kind hey, of butthead, logo. it's her. Whoa. Uh, hey, baby. Uh, are we going to, like, do it now? <laughs> <laughs> you two have got two seconds. Uh, is that going to be enough time? <laughs> <laughs> She's like 14. <laughs> Raven pulls up with her magic. Oh, Who just, sent you? He spat all over your phone. I can Listen, see I'm it. trying to do their voices. <laughs> he's, he's getting into character. He's being... <laughs> uh, this red deer man, he uh, said he was going to pay us to do you. <laughs> Beavis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trigun, son of a bitch. All right. What's he paying you? Uh, 10, uh... Ten grand? Oh, that cheap ass. I got a better deal for you. I'll spare your lives and pay you twenty grand if you go back and do him. Uh, you want us to do a guy? Uh, no way. He, him, I don't know, butthead. That's a lot of money. Maybe if we close our eyes and pretend he's a chick. Butthead slaps him upside. Okay, this is just movie jokes again. <laughs> Raven walks away while Beavis and Butthead begin reading Raven's, ready in babe Raven's bed for the moment of truth. I don't know how I'm going to get rid of these guys. They don't seem that dangerous, but they seem real annoying. Beavis. No way, Butthead. You always go first. No way, Butthead. You always go first. Butthead. Damn it, Beavis. We've never done this before. Slaps Beavis upside the head as Raven returns her attention to the duo. Butthead. So, uh, uh, you want to, uh, you know, uh, do it. We're finally going to score. <laughs> Raven <laughs> begins to realize the, re begins to realize they want to score with her and that they have no idea what they were hired for. Do it? You guys want to score? Flattered a little. <laughs> Beavis and Butthead begin fighting over who gets the score. <laughs> Damn it. Ow. Cut it out. Raven, you wait here, Butthead. They use Trigun to plot convenience themselves 40 minutes into the movie. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> it's That's, just... <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. I'm going to read forward again. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh my god, they jump out of the tower and then it just skips to the part where they're crawling in the desert and Butthead <laughs> says the sun sucks. <laughs> they just fall, they just jump out of the tower and immediately begin crawling in the sand. <laughs> okay, that's not gonna go anywhere. What as much as I, 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 much as I love the movie, <laughs> I'm not gonna continue to try to do their voices and read the movie jokes. I'm gonna give that one a rating of the Beavis and Butthead do america but it's ironed down into a youtube poop <laughs> yeah it's basically ironed down into a youtube poop featuring raven <laughs> and trigon in his two scenes from the show steven you should have a beavis and butthead poll with raven but that's yeah. the only thing to vote on bolt. <laughs> just one option <laughs> see how many votes it gets that's you choose a, a female and a male and the Female is Raven and the male is only Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> <laughs> Choose your own adventure. Mm, I give that a score out of a score. <laughs> I give it a forcing me to flex Beavis and Butthead voice acting, <laughs> which was fun for me for like five minutes <laughs> out of ten. So I guess it's a five out of ten. It was okay. <laughs> But it was just stolen. Harsh. A lot of fanfics is just stolen plots and yeah. scripts just reworked to have OCs or characters they feel like inserting, as we know now. <laughs> so you almost expect it going in when you have a really weird combination like that. Yeah. Are you all done? Yep. Alright. For our lovely viewers at home, if you'd like to get the full package on that, look up Beavis and Butthead Do America. It's probably on YouTube, because who has the rights to Beavis and Butthead anymore? <laughs> and it's a pretty good movie, considering the subject. Yeah. Yeah, if you like, if, if you like what you hear on here, then you're gonna enjoy that movie. <laughs> and I did do my research. I checked out all through the guy's page, and, um... It, I could not find chapter one. 
So this story just jumps right into chapter two. So we're just gonna roll with it and see where this takes us. So, <clears throat> Robin's point of view. Raven handed me the belt when she took that she took from Red X. I glanced at it. Then we put him behind bars and returned to the tower. When we got there, Raven was nowhere to found, so we just <laughs> let her be. <laughs> a good story. We couldn't find her, so we let her be. <laughs> we Verbatim, uh, as, as always, lady and gentle, ladies and gentlemen. Lady and yeah. gentle. Lady, the one lady that listens to this. Me. If you're a lady and you listen to this, comment below. I went to the evidence room. You can see there it's spelled pretty poorly. <laughs> yeah, good try. Go. And put the belt in there. Starfire came in shutting the door behind her and locked it. <laughs> oh, hey, Star. What are you doing open here? I asked her, but she came over to me and kissed my lips. Whoa. <laughs> Raven's point of view. I, pa I passed by the evidence room. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I'll cut this out. <coughs> Hold on. Oh, gross. <laughs> you gotta make sure the Baha Blast gets into every pore of the throat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Smooth it out. Really like opens up the windpipes. <laughs> fine Baja Blast based lubricant. Mm -hmm. Flavored body oil. <laughs> And the Taco Bell original. Yeah, next time you're sensualizing your lady, just dump a whole can of Baja Blast right in her back. Just let it spill over the bed and roll her in it, and then flip her back over. Squeeze out a bunch of the mild sauce on her back and rub it in like suntan lotion. If you're thinking about thinking about it, just know Baja Blast is only in stores for the summer, so you better think fast. Mm, it says <coughs> Taco Bell's hot sauce flavored chips. <laughs> Which you can also crumble up and rub on somebody's back. Did Taco Bell give us money? A hush. <laughs> um, I love Taco Bell. I passed by the evidence room on the way to my room and heard Starfire and Robin going crazy. <laughs> Thankfully the door was locked and nobody was going to try to go in there and see what was going on for themselves. I heard Starfire start to kiss Robin and they went crazy. It was absolutely... <laughs> Crazy. Robin screamed at her really loud. <laughs> Robin threatened to hit her really hard, but he didn't do it. I waited to find out. They broke the fucking sincerity of the cartoon so hard that they broke their cannon. She is much stronger than him. <laughs> when I got into my room, grabbing a suitcase and started packing all my stuff. I said, none of that. Goodbye. <laughs> I really wanted to go and live my own life. Without Robin bossing me around anymore. And God, I hate else. Robin. <laughs> Starfire and Beast Boy aren't going to be bothering me for stupid reasons anymore. She probably likes Cyborg, I guess. <laughs> and the <laughs> one that runs up runs up to her in the middle of the hall, motion tweens up to her ear and says, Booyah! <laughs> she, she loves goes, that. Booyah! She, she, she asks for it every morning. <laughs> booyah! She's, he says, God, I love Cyborg. <laughs> no one else. <laughs> booyah this! <laughs> booyah! <laughs> <laughs> Presses his lips to her eardrum and goes, Booyah! He fucking pronounced Booyah! Emoji Booyah! He gets up every day at precisely 4 30 in the morning, presses his <laughs> lips against the door, and goes, Booyah! <laughs> his robot lips compress and squeeze through her door slot. His tongue just drills a hole through the door. <laughs> <laughs> every every day, Raven's got to install a new door. Every day, a Cyborg so won't quit it. Cyborg but she loves him. <laughs> Booyah! <laughs> you can't mind that for this audio program. <laughs> <laughs> It's just, it's just, it's just noise now. <laughs> For those of you at home, we are mimicking with our hands, our tongue buzzing a hole through the wall, and then screaming booyah through said hole. <laughs> yeah, it's real funny. <laughs> After all my stuff was packed, I snuck out of my bedroom window and shut it behind me and fly off to California. 
<laughs> How far is that? <laughs> well, you know, a hop, skip, and a jump. Yeah, next door. California. Yeah. Do you, wherever Gotham City is. Denver. Yeah, Detroit. Yeah. <laughs> Ocean Shores. They should. Orange County. <laughs> you <see. laughs> They shouldn't be looking for me for a while. I flew off without looking back at that dreaded tower. I hope none of them look for me because I'm tired of being their doormat. As soon as I get California, I can be what I want to be, not what this city <laughs> wants me to be. A fucking I thought to myself. <laughs> existential shit, Jesus Christ. I'll hold my words, I'll hold my tongue. Maybe she's got greater purpose. Yeah. As I carried my suitcases in the air with me. End of point of view. Raven was right. None of the other Titans looked for her for a while, until Beast Boy went snooping around into her room. He went in there and looked for Raven, but she was nowhere to be found. Titans, go! Robin said as, as the rest of us split up and tried to attack Red X. It was dark outside, but we managed to stay focused. Red X trapped Starfire to the wall with an X. Then he made a hole in the ground and Beast Boy came at him and fell through. Cyborg got shut down by another X, and Robin got trapped in an electrical net that got tighter every time he tried to move. Red X glanced around, knowing he defeated the Titans, but he still had to fight me. Who? <laughs> Four down and one to go. Where is that stupid goth girl? Come here, <laughs> kitty kitty. Red X called out to me. Raven pulled her hood up. Is this chapter one? I guess this is chapter one. It's Sorry. What a debacle. Yeah, like... Okay, so... Sorry about that. The first page was like some of chapter two, but this is the start of it. <clears throat> so... Unless it's a flashback, but I really don't think that's the case. I guess it has to be. Otherwise, he just like came back to the story and started writing from the top of the page. Well, yeah, like, because okay. I scrolled down and I saw chapter two right here, so... Oh, jeez. So that's gonna be... Weird. But it looks to be a little different. This is the this is the DX, the director's cut. Mm. Ah. So, I don't know. I'd... Just roll with us, ladies and gentlemen. Raven pulled her hood out over her head and came in a dark part of the room, so he wasn't able to see her. You looking for me? Raven said as her eyes went white as she levitated in the air with her cape opened. Come to where I could see you, Red X said, crossing his arms and leaning against the wall. Azeroth Metrion Zenthos! I said as dark magic came and took down Red X. Every time I moved my hands, my powers got stronger and took him down hard. He tried to force. Uh, he tried to escape, but I was quicker. I trapped him in a force field and took his belt away from him, so he wouldn't try to make a run for it. Raven handed the belt to Robin and just disappeared without a trace. Chapter two, Ooh. for real this time. How about? Oh yeah. Robin's point of view. Raven handed me the belt that she took from Red X. I glanced at it, and then we put him behind bars and returned to the tower. When we got there. Raven was nowhere to be found, so we just let her be. See, it's worth it for typos like that. <laughs> I went into the evidence room and put the belt in there. Starfire came in shutting the door behind her and locked it. Oh, hey, Star. What are you doing in here? I asked her, but she came over to me and kissed my lips. She oh, ran man. her hands across my chest, taking my shirt off and tossed it somewhere Whoa. on the floor. DX. I was turned on. Oh, took dude. her and took her off her clothes and throw them on the floor. She laid on the, the floor and pulled me on top of her. Starfire took my pants and boxers off. Now both of us are naked. End of point of view. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Raven's point of view. I passed by the evidence room. On the way to my room, I heard Starfire and Robin going crazy. Thankfully, the door was locked and nobody was going to try to go in there and see what was going on for themselves. When I got into my room grabbing a suitcase and started packing all my stuff. I really wanted to go and live my own life without Robin bossing me around anymore or anyone else. Starfire and Beast Boy aren't going to be bothering me for stupid reasons anymore. After all my stuff was packed, 
I snuck out of my bedroom window and shut it behind me and fly off to California. They shouldn't be looking for me for a while. I flew off without looking back at that dreaded tower. I hope none of them look for me because I'm tired of being their doormat. As soon as I get California, I can be what I want to be, not what the city wants me to be. <laughs> so I thought to get myself, California was intentional, huh? <laughs> yeah. As I carried my suitcases in the air with me. End of point of view. Raven was right. None of the other Titans looked for her for a while. Until Beast Boy went snooping around her room. He went in there and looked for Raven, but she was nowhere to be found. C was worth it for that one extra scene where Starfire and Robin got a little steamier. Oh, now we were both in it. <coughs> they were both going well. Now we can both be naked and they did nothing. <laughs> yeah, they went crazy. They, they went lost crazy. their minds. Chapter 3. Raven hey. had left the Titan's Tower to be on her own. She had flown for hours at a time, trying to get as far away from the other Titans as possible for her own safety. Raven's point of view. It felt like I had been flying forever, but I can't complain because being in the same car with Starfire and Beast Boy was enough for me to handle. God, I knew I was almost in California. <laughs> she's like an emo teen that can actually go to California. Yeah. <laughs> Awful. God. Too much power. Almost there, just a little further and I can stop flying, I said to myself as soon as I arrived to California. <laughs> <laughs> like where in California? <laughs> just like the state? It's where dreams are made! <laughs> <laughs> she crosses the border and she's like, finally. <laughs> oh dear. I've made it. When I got there, I was amazed by how there were some cars driving by, like a bunch of little ants going to their ant hill. Where was she before that did not have cars? She was in a city. She was trapped on her tower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she had to drive in the car with Robin and. and then she remembered her. she could fly. <laughs> End of point. And if point of view. Going to California. I got my bags by the door and I'm ready to leave. So yeah, I'm moving forward. I'm on my way to find where I need to be. Cause every moment now is what I believe somehow. Would you be my reality? All right now. Cause there's no other feeling like it. The only way you can define it is that I'm on my own. It somehow feels like home. There's no other feeling like it. So really I can't deny it. I don't feel alone. It somehow feels like home. Walking in California, making my way down Sunset Boulevard. Everyone looks familiar, so perfect like a picture from a magazine. Cause every moment now is what I believe somehow will be my reality. Because there's no other feeling like it. This is a song, by the way. I know, it's like a musical <laughs> number as if Raven would ever sing. No, don't worry, it's not her. Where are the lyrics? Oh. The oh. only way you can define it is that I'm on my own. It somehow feels like home. The there's no other I feeling like it. it. So, so real I'm that I can't deny it. I don't feel alone. It somehow don't feels feel like home. Alone. Yeah, I'm not singing it because I would give it away. Is this like the other like, Titans break into song after just, Raven leaves? He's so happy. I just yeah. Oh, I'm just, I thought Raven was singing. I was just imagining Raven and her fucking deadpan voice singing something. Floating above the city. I was so happy. They've never crossed my mind. I'll take a chance every time. And I will spread my wings. I will spread my wings. I've never been afraid to try. Put everything on the line. On the line. On the right right now. Cause there's no other feeling like it So real that I can't deny it I don't feel alone It somehow feels like home times four Somehow feels like home to me Somehow feels like home mm -mm. Somehow feels like home to me Walking in California Making my way down Sunset Boulevard I flap my wings and she calls me Flyboard Chapter 4 the guys are hanging out with each other, playing video games, dome hockey, and watching horror movies. James, can you grab me a soda since you're in the kitchen? Kendall asked. James tossed him a soda, <laughs> then came and sat down on the couch with his friends. Okay. Oh, I forgot this was a crossover. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. Okay. They don't even live it. Oh, they do because they move, right? From Minnesota? Yeah. Okay, right. Hollywood okay. Hills. Which movie are we going to watch? 
There's Halloween. Saw the whole entire movies of that. <laughs> the 13th. Nine hours of Saw. Yeah. Strangers. Logan said as he named off the movie titles. God. He goes Saw 1, Saw 2, Saw 3, Saw 4. Saw 5, Saw 6, and there's Saw 3D. Oh, I don't care. Just pick a movie already, Carlos said sitting down with a giant bowl of popcorn. Logan just picked a movie and they sat down and watched it. The lights were turned off. The TV and the big screen and they and they enjoy the movie. Oh, James right started falling start. asleep with his feet propped up on the coffee table. Oh dear. Hey, wake up! You're gonna miss the best part! Kendall whispered as he nudged James on the arm. He smashed James' arm. <laughs> <laughs> wake up! Wake up! <laughs> James opened his eyes and tried to finish watching the movie, but he was just too tired. The others finished the movie without him and went to bed. Mrs. Knight came home and laid a blanket on him. You know what it is yet? Go ahead. What is it? Do you? Repeat what you just said. Mrs. Knight came home and laid a blanket on him. I mean, the other I'll character keep going. names are laid out. Go ahead. After she put the blanket on him, she went to in her room to go to bed as well. The apartment was quiet too quiet but everyone is still sleeping so nothing really mattered anyway in the morning mrs knight made breakfast for all of them the smell of bacon woke up and the other breakfast food had woken them up kendall carlos and logan ran out of their of their rooms and sliding across the floor like dogs oh, running on the wood floor. yeah there's a lot of like fairly odd parent sound that. effects going like, <laughs> They ran out of their rooms and they oh. skittered on the floor like dogs. I did. We really like slid <laughs> across the ground like grabbing the stuff. I didn't recognize Kendall. <laughs> Kendall's name. He's the main one. Yeah, I remember Logan. I remember Kendall. Johnny <laughs> Test sound effects. <laughs> Johnny Test sound effects. Johnny Test X very odd parent sound effects. <laughs> Carlos slipped and fell on his butt and brought the other two down with him. Katie started laughing her butt off when she saw them go down. You boys okay? Mrs. Knight asked as she served their plates. We're okay, they said in unison, getting up off the floor and brushed oh themselves God. off. After y'all eat, Gustavo called and said he wanted you at the studio, <laughs> Mrs. Knight said eating her breakfast. Gustavo called and predicted you'd fall and laughed. <laughs> he, he asked me to play you this recording. Gustavo himself. <laughs> <laughs> that Gustavo guy is funny. <laughs> I heard he's in Grand Theft Auto V. <laughs> Look up Gustavo Rock in Grand Theft Auto V. Look up Gustavo uh, Stephen Cl Kramer Glickman's YouTube channel in general. <laughs> you won't believe it. It's believe real. <laughs> Gustavo himself <laughs> fell and then planted a trip wire so the rest of them would <laughs> fall so he would feel bad. He waxed the floors. <laughs> he broke into their home and waxed their floors for a gag. <laughs> he probably has dogs. a key. Yeah, there is dog. It's still breaking in if you don't let him. <laughs> he had his big can of Crisco and a thin paper towel. He's <laughs> scooping out and wiping it on the hardwood. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to suggest he fucking put God. Crisco on himself and slid on him. <laughs> <laughs> the imagery of like a thin paper towel and an entire... Crisco is like, does not come off. That's horrible. <laughs> He's never getting it off his big beard. I used yet. to have to bake with Crisco at work, and you could just never clean your measuring cups of it. It just doesn't come pure off. Lard. It's uh. pure. Ugh. James was still knocked out on the couch with his leg and arm hanging off. Katie took pictures of him and posted them on the internet. The other guys had to wake him up, otherwise they'd have to put up with Gustavo yelling at them. Wake up, the guy said, then asking Katie for help was a make mistake. Katie grabbed an air horn, pushing the button, and James fell, jumped and fell off the couch. <laughs> got him. All of them laughed at him as he got up off the floor. <laughs> All of you kicked him on the floor and laughed. <laughs> it's like, oh, God, stop, I'm the pretty one. <laughs> James went to take a shower and then got ready to go to the studio with his others. As soon as the boys left, Mrs. Knight and Katie cleaned the, the apartment up while they weren't there. Good job, you two. <laughs> what is Raven going to get there? Chapter 5, Raven's Point of View. Oh, sweet. Gustavo's going to hire her. 
Gustavo's gonna kick her out of the studio. Gustavo's gonna trip her up. Make her fall. <laughs> Gustavo's gonna pull the old tripwire in Crisco. <laughs> he's gonna slide on he's gonna slide into her book. He's gonna scream Azeroth, Metreon, Zinthos. <laughs> He's gonna lay on his side and bowl over. He's gonna hold his hand out and the whole world's gonna give negative vision. <laughs> <laughs> and it's gonna go... <laughs> turn into Grand Theft Auto 5. Gustavo just... <laughs> Gustavo just phonetically learns a fucking dark art spell. Gustavo's eyes go white. <laughs> <laughs> Gustavo's in a hentai parody. Mm. That's never too late. <laughs> He'd just post about it on his YouTube and he'd be sad. <laughs> he'd say, I'm in a hentai parody. His channel gets fucking deleted. <laughs> <laughs> Steven, you can't post hentai on your channel. Yeah, Why I'm not? in it. It's okay. It's I like okay. it. I like it, though. It's cartoons. Nobody will ever it's know. It's Butch Hartman, like the Chipmunks episode. It's. <laughs> Butch Hartman drew my bare body, it's okay. <laughs> he gave me my square dong, it's funny. Butch Hartman's the only one in this society that knows what my donger looks like. <laughs> Butch Hartman asked me in private. <laughs> I told him in excruciating detail, but wouldn't show him because he scares me. I gave him... I gave Butch Harmon a I gave Butch Harmon a ref of my dick, but it didn't translate at all in his style because he ignores all reference material. Butch Harmon looks exactly like his drawing of himself, and it scares me. I don't know which one's real anymore. I can't tell if Butch Hartman's 2D or not. Butch Hartman made my dick square and I don't like it. Is Butch Hartman real? I described, I described my dick and Butch Hartman described it back to me and now it looks like a cartoon square. <laughs> Every right. time I take a shower, that's all I can see. <laughs> His imagery is too precise. That was a thick outline. He's got a thick, bold pen outline. <laughs> I can't see it underneath with all the shadowing. I don't think he has any idea what line weight is because he, he gave... <laughs> Which my Hartman's line weight on his bamboo tablet's been stuck at the same distance for ten years. He doesn't know how to fix his drivers. <laughs> it's, a, it's okay, he deals with the 240 levels of pressure sensitivity. He's been using the same see-through bright neon green Mac <laughs> for the last 15 years in the Nick office with the same drivers and line weight on his bamboo tablet. <laughs> he doesn't like change. He doesn't know how I, to draw. Uh, I, uh, I use a bamboo. Uh, you can't really get one nowadays, so I feel pretty special about that. <laughs> I email Bamboo demanding fixed drivers every week, every year. I demand a new tablet, but they don't, so I have to deal with this. I say, listen, whack em. Why? Why is your name that? Anyway, give me a Bamboo, please. They keep sending chop, me chop, I'm Butch Hartman. They send me physical letters back saying no. You'd think the parchment price would outweigh the cost of a new tablet at this point. Fun, fun fact, guys, that actually is what their friggin' name is pronounced as whack em. Mm-hmm. Funny. You call their friggin' customer support, that's how they pronounce it. It's not Wacom, you <laughs> filth. They okay, say, you know, our name is pronounced Wacom, and they hang up on you. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's they just, like, block your number immediately. <laughs> they ban you your IP address from using a bamboo tablet forever. Direct... You try to call back and it, like, redirects you to the McDonald's. They direct you to the frickin' audio of a Butch Hartman video. They direct you to the Freddy Freaker hotline. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where he's been hiding. <laughs> this derailed that's a lot. That, that's where the license went. <laughs> Butch Hartman owns Freddy Freaker. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna make it instead of my uh, elf detective show, I've decided to make a full length feature about uh, Freddy Freaker. For those of you who don't know, Freddy Freaker is uh, he's the party freak. That's what my foot looks like when I was in the bath for over an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Put him in front of the screen and yell. <laughs> and just shake it around. 
I thought you were just gonna say it looks like his foot, but you made it a lot worse. It's just <laughs> swollen and soggy. And <laughs> yellow with <laughs> eyes. I shake and call the party free. You got gangrene. Over a black green screen. Alright, George, continue. Chapter 5 Good. Raven's Point of View. I arrived in California a few hours ago. Landing on my feet and seeing a building a few feet away, I started walking towards it now and read the sign. It said Palm Woods on it, and I walked in going to the desk and hit the bell. What? Who is and what do you want? Mr. Bitters asked, coming out of his office and went to the desk. I was wanting to check in. I'll come back later, I said as I began to back away from his desk. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were here someone else. Here, let me put them, let me get you through the paperwork, Mr. Bitters said, putting a fake smile on. Uh, thanks, I replied as I filled out the paperwork, handing it to him along with the money to pay for the apartment. And that's it. It's the end of the story. Whoa. Yet again, the story ends before anything happens, as they always do. <laughs> I want to reiterate that in the description, James falls for Raven, who is actually Christine. I don't know who that is. But they date for a while until James finds out her secret and that Raven has been hiding. Now Raven is invisible to everyone except James. Will James give away her secret to keep he de or will he keep it to himself? Or or will he keep it yo himself? He has to make a decision before Raven destroys planet Earth. So we didn't get a lot of that. Interesting they decided the plot before they wrote it. Hmm. Yeah, a lot of people sure like to do that, don't they? Hmm. I give this out of ten. I give it. I give it Butch Hartman's lack of line weight knowledge despite over two decades of animation experience. <laughs> I give it a Butch Hartman tech support phone call. <laughs> out of ten. 1 oh freak. <laughs> And he gets confused or upset with the, the phone line. He starts yelling the Freddy Freaker Hotline song, and they say, "Butch, you you have to stop doing that when we're talking to you." And they hang up on him. Butch Hartman ends every single one of his YouTube videos with two dollars a call. <laughs> you can call Butch Hartman for two dollars. <laughs> his jaw hinges and his puppet mouth opens, and he says, two dollars a call." <laughs> I'm gonna give this story a rating of Robin's unseen nut because you knew, you know it was gonna happen and you knew it wanted to happen, but it just didn't. You didn't get any anything you wanted out of it. Starfire <laughs> and Robin get to go wild. Why can't Robin? Yeah. I mean, Raven. Yeah. They, you you think we don't know that you? It's it's it seems like it, but without the rest of the critical <laughs> details, you'll never really know. It's implied. I wanted Raven. And yeah, and it was implied that Raven was going to turn invisible too, but that didn't happen. Now did it? <laughs> she was. Uh, I'm steamed. I wanted Butch Hartman and Raven to get it on. I'm reading another one because I thought it was funny and oh, short. Sweet. I hope it's good. Hope it is Butch Hartman. Anyway. It's a good crossover, at least, so hopefully it's something. Yours. By the way, at the top it just says, I own this. <laughs> <laughs> I am the creator of Teen Titans. This is oh, my property. But I can assure you that neither of these properties belong to this man. <laughs> <laughs> How can you be so certain? Oh my god. I do have to reiterate right away. It's not Big Time Rush, but the character's named James. So, oh, so just think about that for a bit as I go into this hot little number. James is outside shunning trucks when he sees a crying woman with a rain cloud hovering over her. The woman quickly spots James and excitedly runs toward him, causing him to chug in fear. But the woman comes in close in tears as the just like chug <laughs> air. As the woman with tears in her eyes, James asked, "Welcome. What's your name?" The woman introduced herself. The woman said, my name Blackfire, she said with tears, <laughs> walls up in her eyes. My name Blackfire. She walks up, he chugs air. Ooh, ooh. Oh, he chugs. She I guarantee it. you that's what he does. Okay. <laughs> my name Blackfire. The woman said, my name Blackfire, she said with tears, wells up in her eyes. Why are they crying and chugging? And... <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> What's going on? <laughs> James looked at her. Her body is shown to be very beautiful. Her growing long black hair is down to her waist and straight with bangs. Compared to Starfire's outfit implying he's met Starfire before, this is number four of a series, I think. It, it acts more like full body armor with a black crop top, mini skirt, and thigh high boots. Nice. James. <laughs> James felt sorry for the lady. He asked, "Are you lost?" Blackfire replied with a yes, with sadness, as she goes onto her buffer onto her buffers as he sobs. A bit. James Why knew. Everyone's so sad. <laughs> he decided to this take a, her to the sheds. This is a very bipolar to the sheds. Ass story. My God. <laughs> <laughs> like a bipolar ass story. Jesus Christ. Ooh. What? I just know what it is, and I don't think you're gonna find out, <laughs> and I'm sheds. worried. Oh shit! The sheds. The sheds? At the sheds, James showed the lonely engines to Blackfire that she was lonely. She smiled a little as the other engines became impressed that Wait. James... No! <laughs> no! <laughs> but unknown to him... It better not be what I think it is! <laughs> someone was watching her. <laughs> okay. I swear to God. <laughs> Finish it! I'm trying. <laughs> I know why he chugs now. <laughs> Kill me. This is not chugging air anymore. That was. <laughs> why James? Fuck me. Why James four times? <laughs> <laughs> Later that night, the moon was full as the other engines were asleep. Blackfire was wearing a black bra and on <laughs> <laughs> She better be wearing more than that! <laughs> as James noticed, caused him to get a nosebleed as his paint. As Blackfire grabs a blanket and a pillow, she fell asleep and said, Good night, sister dear. Much to his joy, they both laughed. What? <laughs> I don't know. Much to his joy, they both laughed. Yeah. By morning, the fierce winds had gone, but the damage was done. Blackfire came to see Excuse him in the me? yard. <laughs> James, she said, what's today? James was surprised by this. He said, yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> then Blackfire comes hug him and says, boo boo bear. James blushed with joy as she hugged him good. But meanwhile, Thomas was surprised that James had fallen in love with an alien. But then a shadow appeared, but it was only a tree, and James was getting worried, but Blackfire understand it's peaceful, she said, as he, then Henry arrived with the coaches. This is the most powerful horror story I've ever heard. I really don't fucking like this. I'm I... so disturbed by the imagery I'm being, like, introduced to. Like, I just got done watching Shed 17 on YouTube. This shit is revolting. James, <clears throat> James, he said, you are in love. James said, yes, it's quiet. It's quiet. Blackfire said, hello, Henry. Henry was worried he thought someone was talking to him. He chugged away nervously. This is the most alien, bizarro thing I've ever heard in my life. What is going on? It's written so strangely. It's written like a psychopath. It's like, <laughs> and then a large shadow appeared, but it was only a tree. I'm and James got next scared. Next line. Blackfire said, it's okay. Henry arrived and said, you are love. Y yeah. Blackfire asked, why, he is, why is he nervous? James responded, Henry, Henry gets a little worrisome, he said, and they chugged away. <laughs> I'd be afraid too. They chugged away. Later that night, James was tired from all that working. He was starting to feel emotional. His eyes well up his own, with tears, showering himself with his own tears. James, Blackfire asks, becomes worried. James sniffled, I'm sorry. It's been a bad day for me. The engines made me feel sorry. Blackfire felt sorry for him, then he burst into tears again and ran into the shed as Blackfire joins up with him. Later that night, James was miserable. Blackfire hugged him tight, and that moment made him feel better afterwards. But then, a mysterious woman was watching them through the window as if nothing had happened, but James looked and went back to sleep. Oh no. Mm. 
Later than not Blackfire. There's only one other woman. One not train. <laughs> yeah, one new not train the, creature. The fat conductor was cross. I don't like that. <laughs> I hate Teen Titans. Why does the train get the woman? <laughs> <laughs> I am the fat conductor. <laughs> I'm gonna fuck Blackfire. <laughs> Steven, maybe that can be your poll. <laughs> fuck the, the fat, fat conductor. <laughs> the yeah. fat conductor acts one Teen Titan character. That's gonna but make who? me so... I'm gonna lose my Patreon license over this. <laughs> It'd be Thomas, or James, or Henry, or the mean one. The person. I like person. He's the mean one, right? No, no, the mean one's like the big square one that has the crane. Yeah, Percy's yeah. the green one. Oh. <laughs> Later on that day, James was taking some trucks when Blackfire baked him a delicious a tamarani as he stopped by Starfire, a tamaranian titan. She spoke coldly. Hello, sister. She said bitter. Blackfire spoke happily. Oh, you're mad. I know, I should have told you I was leaving. But you know how I hate goodbyes, and I'm in love with James. Starfire didn't agree with her. She roared in her, You are a criminal, and you are going to let me take your place in jail. What? What? Oh, my God. I think that actually happens. It's, yeah, that's like the first, ep the first episode Blackfire shows up. She frame, She gets Starfire in the, in the bookie. I mm -hmm. see. Episode 2 of Teen Titans. You have episode 2 of Teen Titans. Yeah, it is. I Black told Fire's you introduced that early. Yeah, I told you I have a very definitive memory I of thought, the first like five episodes. I thought Blackfire was like season two. No, 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 no. Episode wow. two. Interesting. Mm. And episode three was when they have the breakup with the Sludge Monsters and Cinderblock. Mm -hmm. mm. There was a lot of merchandise made after the first few episodes were out. Yeah. Episode four, I think, was the puppet episode. Episode five was Mad Mod. Yeah. Mm. And that's where I stopped keeping track. Blackfire nodded yes to her as if she has was been tricked after she attacked her James was huffing by when Blackfire attacked Starfire as mm. James took Blackfire and then left to, in a hurry. But Starfire rushes in and shouted, You are going to stay away from her and that's final! And with that, Starfire took Blackfire away. Leaving James in a heartbroken manner, he ran <laughs> off in tears, hoping to get her back, but it was no use. She was gone. That would not make the enemies of, a, of sentient train people <laughs> that huff and chug and exist. Elias, it's okay. They're stuck on their fucking tracks. I can't do shit. <laughs> yeah. You, you see one off their tracks for one frame and tell me you're not scared for life. <laughs> fall the fuck over because they're trains. <laughs> <laughs> you pop one of their wheels off the tracks and they're free <laughs> to roam the earth eternally. You want to be scared of Thomas the tra Tank Engine for life? Just watch Shed, uh, Shed 17 on YouTube. It's what crazy. is Shed 17? Is it's it a creepypasta? The, it's like this ridiculously well done uh, 3 d anime doc, uh, like horror document on how like the trains are actually like bio-infused people and whatnot. <laughs> it sounds funny, but they actually execute it well. Mm, that's really scary. I don't want to watch that <laughs> it's, ever. It's getting, I wa do. <laughs> wa watch it, because it's actually getting a sequel soon this summer, I'm pretty Ooh. sure. And this is like a cult classic from like two years ago, supposedly. That's scary. Yeah. Ah, super, super. Super, super. The fat conductor's the enemy, it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I want to watch it now. Okay, <laughs> fat conductor. We can watch it before you go to bed. No! <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> we'll watch it tomorrow. I was, uh. Okay. I'll we'll watch it tomorrow. I'll make Dakota watch it too so I don't get scared. I'll get it. <laughs> yes, everybody bring a person to have affectionate <laughs> cuddle with to keep you sane. I'm horror horror. Horror. Yoko. <laughs> yeah. I had Merkel the first time around, but he wasn't a fan. Did Merkel he see it? His, his uh, eyes sink into his head. He <laughs> turned into a train. He's the, he's the one who introduced me to it. Was he scared? He wasn't scared, but he was freaking laughing at the black, uh, the fat conductor. The black? <laughs> I'm sorry. I keep, the fat conductor. I'm sorry. <laughs> Merkel thought it was a comedy. <laughs> He thought it was a YouTube poop. <laughs> Do I have to cut out George Merkel talk? No one knows. Well, he's going to have to come on the podcast, I guess, now. Yeah. We now can. that he's lore. We can do a Lord Flux episode. That'll be good. Do have to censor his last name? Yeah, last, ask George Merkel if he wants me to censor his name. Okay. <laughs> 
later that Gordon was just about to sleep, so when James crying was so loud, he pulled his buffers and made an angry face. Dude, James is crying and blubbering causes the other engines to get worried. But in jail, in Jump City, Blackfire was crying also about James. She escaped with her powers and flew back to James in time as then James and Blackfire were crying because they missed each other and they cried all night. Then continues to sob while the moon shines over them. Ashamed, Blackfire was in the day gone by Blackfire and James are in love again. Blackfire moved to the island of Sodder. Starfire was never seen again and as Starfire isn't. Quickly starts to take her place on the team. Feeling like they don't need her anymore as James and Blackfire are still in love. Hmm. The end. Ooh. Wow, what a good story. Good. Like a true lore. I, I give this 10 out of 10 chugs. <laughs> <laughs> I give it one big chug and bust the engine up. One big gulp. <laughs> I give it James' biomechanical penis. Ready to go. God. I give it the train getting. Um, it's like the same color as his face, and it just like comes out like a tube. It comes out of his train pipe on top. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you think the other trains know what that means? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I go, uh, James is horny. <laughs> James is getting some today. Congrats, James. You don't have to cry anymore. <laughs> Wait, you're still crying, crying again? Oh, James. If he bangs Blackfire, do you think she fucking honks the horn because the air is coming up out of her mouth? Yeah, that's how it works. So oh, sweet. <laughs> There's a direct passage from the vaginal cavity all the way leading up to the mouth. It's okay, you can do the ass. <laughs> That's what James Like the picture of Patrick me. Starr with his mouth open. <laughs> <laughs> the one where he has a trumpet through his head? No, when he's just like in. Like, when, he's, when he's like a. When he falls asleep immediately yeah. from Squidward, he's like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sitting on the couch like a slouch. Yeah, with his mouth wide open making the horn noise. <laughs> the oh. horn noise. But it's Blackfire in her underwear. Oh my god. That James was embarrassed about. That sounds like a horrifying yeah. Photoshop to me. Is that what Chud 17's about? No! <laughs> James doesn't get his nut. James gets his nut? No. James gets his nut too. The black conductor might. James cries and gets his conductor, nut. conductor, not the black conductor. Steven, what could possibly make you get those things mixed up? I don't know. I guess it's because he, like, wears all black. Alright, I'll give you that one. <laughs> but I'm on to you. <laughs> uh, it's the way he eats fried chicken with his greasy plastic puts head. Those, it's a hey! <laughs> It's a way it calls I don't expect that from you. It's a way it calls watermelon seeds watsamelon seeds. Stop! <laughs> <laughs> he does not do that. It's okay. It's in the movie where he fights the one with the big shovel. He's like, oh, the black conductor was cross. He was like, yes, Thomas. I'm canceling the my, podcast. Catch me my shipment of lots of melon seeds. My, <laughs> my thing actually happened. <laughs> the conductor I, lights chicken. Mine happened. You'll see. Do okay. any of you guys want to outro us for once? Hmm. Hmm. No. <laughs> thank See you guys. Is. Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode. We had a hoot and a holler. It's actually a lot longer than I expected it to be. I kind of thought we were just going to knock this one out really quickly, but, you know, that's what happens when you have total drama parodies and the be- the scripts to Beavis and Butthead do America. <laughs> so. And a really sad, ambient, bizarro train love triangle. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget you can check us out not only on youtube but soundcloud as well um we each have our own individual twitters all that stuff is down below in the links where you can follow us some steven does art elias doesn't post very much but you do post coffee sometimes that's kind of cool oh yeah you can link to my instagram i, I don't want to do that no oh, mind. <laughs> We I have Instagram. Link I your opened Instagram a, on your Twitter. I opened a coffee shop this month, so I'm rather busy, but I'll be more active in the future. He dropped some lots of melon seeds in his coffee. 
and I do drawings every now and then, but I mostly just retweet nonsense and good art. But we're all working on our own stuff, and we're going to keep pumping out these podcasts every two weeks for now. So I hope you enjoy. Make sure to share with your friends. Yay! Now here's the philosophical question we're going to leave you on. And let us know what you think about this in your com- in the comments. Can a train get its nut? Does a train blow its horn when it blows its load? Is it pronounced watermelon or what's a mean? Good night, everybody. <laughs>